Talk to us about Tidy T, man. Now let's 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 pivot over to Tidy T, another you know groundbreaking figure in the early West Coast hip hop. W- what do you remember about his come up, and how did you guys link up? Um, like I don't remember how specifically how we linked up, but I I think it's through, I think it was through Spade. But uh, Todd is another humble person, um, extremely humble. Um, I've always been there for Todd. He's always been there for me. Um, I learned something from Todd before too. Now, mind you, I'm a, I'm a teenager at this time. So at, now I'm probably, I'm maybe 20. I may be 20 years old at this time. And I remember Todd calling me one day and was like, can I use your speakers? Uh, he has to use something of mine. And I, he said, um, no, I said, the only time you call me is when you need me. And he said to me, and I'll never forget these words. He said, well, that's the time you're supposed to call people. <laughs> I mean, damn. <laughs> he's not even that much older than me but he said that and it stuck to my brain even to this day now if somebody else would have said it that wasn't Todd and Todd been consistent our whole relationship even if I don't talk to him for years if I call him right now and he got something I need guess what he's going to say okay DMG come get it mm. so with, that, with those words coming from him I receive it because if I needed him for something right now he's going to come through. If he got it, he's going to come through. So, um, yeah, but overall, Todd is still, to this day, um, still good. I, th- I talked to him, I don't know, about six months ago. We don't talk often, but it was a good conversation. And like I said, he's humble. Um, he stayed humble even, you know, through his fame and stuff. Um, he was a football coach for, for many, many, many years. I'm not sure if he's coaching right now, but he, he coached for Many years, he coached my son for two seasons. Um, then we ended up going to, um, to, I moved to Pomona. And so my other, my younger kids was playing for Snoop Dogg League. But um, Todd was in, Todd actually helped Snoop start winning games. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, Snoop came to Todd for some advice. Todd don't know I know this, but Snoop came to Todd about, some advice like how are you winning all these games um quote unquote and this is what snoop told me what todd told him he said you got to give up the, the the passion for winning so much and just have fun stop putting so much pressure on the kids teach them right tell them to play hard but don't beat them up all the time if they do if they make a mistake or something and uh, Snoop took that advice and he started winning and became a coach and got his own league. Mm. So that's something from Todd. Todd is real cool people. Todd is not a hater, has never been a hater. He's not going to try to keep nothing from you. If he can help you in any way, he'll do it, even if you his competition. I love Todd. What do you remember about first hearing Bataram? And for anyone who doesn't know, let me give you a quick breakdown. You know, early 80s, uh, L.A., I can't remember who was in charge and who, you know, pulled the final, made the final call, but they created this big-ass tank with a big old ram in the front of it. And, you know, drug dealers, they were, by the time the cops would get in the house, you know, before these battering rams, they would have already flushed the stuff down the toilet, swallowed it, threw it out, blah, blah, blah. So the cops come up with this bright idea to, create this bat around boom just bust into the side of your house and a lot of the times they would bust into the wrong house there were several times where they they got the neighbors and they were supposed to get the other person and so that ended kind of quickly but you know um toddy t and mix master spade made this this song that you know was talking about something very specific to la but once again it blew up all over the country but what do you remember about first hearing the song bat around and do you remember even you know hearing stories about a bat around from people in LA during that time? Well, I was around, I was, I was young. I was like 15, 15, 16 years old. Well, I was about 15 when they started doing the bat around. And so whenever they hit a house, whether it's LA or Compton, it was always on the news. Um, but me first hearing the bat around, I was, I was still in high school and I remember hearing it, but the copy that I had, it had been dubbed over a million times, so the quality wasn't good. It took me probably about a month to get a good quality tape. And it was, it was the best. It was like me hearing um, Boys in the Hood. It was like, yeah. this is dope. It, this, is, this is dope. But it was on a mixtape with other songs, though. 
But when we heard that, it, it was the hottest thing in Compton in Los Angeles, period, on the streets. It was the biggest mixtape mix there was in Los Angeles County. Um, the post that I put in um, uh, the, the post on uh, Facebook, the group, um, it's a whole bunch of people since I posted Todd and um, Spade. Everybody's like, where can I get this? Where can I get this? Where can I get it? Where can I get it? Where can I get it? I wish I still had it. Um, I had, a, I, of course I had all the records, but that's another interview. I went through a divorce and she took everything, stole everything, you know, and that's, so I have not, none of that stuff that I had in the past. So I don't even have a copy of my own stuff, no hard copies of my own stuff. But the battle ram was the hottest thing around. I mean, everybody could relate because they've seen it on the news. And everybody knew a drug dealer. Either you were a drug dealer or you know a drug dealer. And we knew about houses getting raided. We knew about everything because we've seen it. So when the battle ram came, came out, we could all relate to it. And the ones who couldn't relate to it was, was an astonishment. Like, this is really happening in L.A.? Mm-hmm. This is really happening? Yeah, it was really happening. Like you said... A lot of times they go to the wrong house, so they start getting sued a lot. But so they had to stop it eventually. But it was a terrible thing. You get your whole house just bulldozed in. I mean, even if you are a drug dealer, they shouldn't have the right to do that. And then for them to be going in the wrong houses, that's even that's even worse. But yeah. they didn't care about us, so you know. But that's another story. Let's keep it positive. Doing my research, I know you you uh, were friends with. Nate Dog, you were friends with Coolio, RIP to both. I know Snoop Dogg, even you and him have a close relation because he used to rock your clothing brand. Is it Westwear? Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, you've been doing your research, huh? I mean, I try to, man. I, I, I appreciate people coming on my show, so I always want to make sure I, you know, properly do my research, especially when it comes to hip hop. But take us back to, to, to those days, man, that the Westwear days and Snoop is rocking your gear and maybe even talk to us about the late great Nate Dog and even even Coolio. Okay, well um at the time I had I was working on DMG and Daddy V album. Um I I was the record company, the manager, the producer and everything and we ended up coming out with the um with the album so I had, at the time I was doing, I was doing a lot of production for a lot of different independent artists. So I, I didn't even tell you about this stuff. So I, I was, I'm the king of the West Coast on mixtapes. Okay. So I started the Compton Swap Meet. I started the Compton Swap Meet. I say that on purpose for a reason. Um, anybody don't know the real history. I started the Compton Swap Meet as big as it is with mixtapes. Um, so when we came out with the album, no. Once I started doing production, I left the swap meet alone and Daddy B was up there by himself and with, you know, with his employees and even employees that I had left back, you know, I let him have them. So I'm promoting the album and I'm producing music for people. Um, so I stopped selling it. So it, one day I came after I did everything I can, I think it was a Saturday or something. I came to the swap meet just to chill, you know, see the homies. And it was a Japanese dude up there and come to find out. Daddy V was selling him mixtapes every month. He was coming from Japan every month. So you guys are getting the whole backdrop of everything. Damn. The whole nothing but the truth. So he was coming from Japan every month. He would buy clothes and buy hip hop stuff, anything black, anything urban that he think he can make some money off of in Japan. Because if you talk to any artist, it's even underground artists, they're gonna always say Japan. Yeah. They love our heritage, they love our culture, they love our music, they love our clothes. They even love our food when they come out here. So I told one of my, my ex-employees who was working for Daddy V at the time, I said, here, go sell him these cassettes and these CDs of the DMG and Daddy V album. It's just a ghetto thing. So he went over there to sell him a CD and a, and a tape. He ended up buying 10, 10 cassettes from me and 10 CDs from me. Because my stuff is in stores and I'm shipping it out, but I'm still a hustler. I'm still a street hustler too. So I always walked around with my product. You know what I mean? So I sold him 10 and 10. A week later, he calls Daddy V and said, do you want to come to Japan? So of course we do. So um, we end up going to Japan and me, know, me being a hustler, like I said in the beginning, him buying clothes every month. I'm like, we can come out with our own clothes, you know, our own design. So I designed um, the original. Um, I came up with the name Westwear. I designed the original, um, or the tag and the label, the original design. 
that's how the clothing line started from there. Um, I'm gonna try to keep it positive without, you know, saying anything negative about anybody, but so it got big. So I was manufacturing the clothes and I would send the clothes to Japan. Eventually we ended up getting a store there. Plus we had like 13 stores that we wholesale to that my ex partner wholesale to. So the stuff was blowing up and me knowing all the rappers, if I go to a concert or something, or I'm at, you know, I'm with Cooley or I'm with Snoop or if I'm with Nate Dogg or Warren G or Mac 10, here, put this on, I'm going to take a picture. Of course, I'm from the hood. I'm DMG. They're not going to charge me. Like they're going to charge somebody else. So I'm accumulating all these pictures. Now we're getting flyers done. We're getting posters done. And um, I, uh, one around Christmas time, we needed to close real fast. So instead of me shipping the clothes to Japan, I flew to Japan to deliver the clothes myself because it was going to be faster. It wouldn't fit a week in customs. I could just take it through with me, mm. pay the um, fees, the, the taxes, the duties, and I'm gone. So it just so happened that Snoop was doing a, some concerts out there when I went. Well, my ex-partner's wife used to dance for a promoter when rappers came to the, to the city, to Tokyo. So she knew the promoter. Well, she knew a promoter that knew the promoter for him um, performing. So we go to the hotel. I have to wait like everybody else, all these photographers and magazine writers and all that stuff. So he come in, and when he saw me, he said, yo, yo, DMG and Daddy V is in motion. Snoop knew me, and I didn't know him. So we chopped it up. He gave me his, his house number in New Orleans or wherever Master P bought it. He gave me his cell phone number and he gave me his manager number. He wanted to hook up like he was that like, like cool. Like mm. he was that cool. He wanted to link up, link up with me. And that's how me and Snoop got hooked up. And that's how he started wearing the clothes and stuff. And, um, that's, that's the story. How we, how Westward got, you know, with Snoop and how it became, you know, big. And I ended up opening up, uh, me and my ex partner broke up. He tried to use me and that's another story. So I ended up getting, we got it. I got a spot on Compton Boulevard off of Long Beach Boulevard. And that was my wholesale place. Then I opened up a retail store in, um, right around the corner walking distance, right on Long Beach Boulevard off of Compton Boulevard, yeah. which I shouldn't have opened up there, but that's another story. But that's the backdrop of, you know, that's, that's everything on Westwear, at least this, this segment. Maybe I'll come yeah. again and talk about stuff. That's dope. But that's dude. how it started. Yeah. You get, Getting everything that nobody else ever got. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that.